Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you five Studio One tips that I wish I knew when I started engineering. We're gonna be looking at some tips and tricks for using PreSonus Studio One today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and look at some Studio One tips and tricks. Tip number one or trick number one in Studio One, which is always, always gonna be one of my favorite features inside of Studio One, especially uh, as a former Pro Tools user. Pro Tools did not have this feature when I was using Pro Tools. So when I made the switch to Studio One many, many years ago, this was one of my favorite features to have available to me and it's keyboard shortcuts. So there's obviously the keyboard shortcuts that come stock, right? Like Command S to save, um, you can create custom keyboard shortcuts though. So that all, all our stock ones are here, right? So in editing, you know, uh, control Z, control Y, that kind of stuff, uh, control C, control V, all the standard ones are coming with it. Split, Alt X, that kind of stuff. Um, you can set loops with the uh, forward slash button. So you can see the loop up top here. If I forward slash, it turns off. If I forward slash, it turns on. Uh, one and two take you to the beginning and end of your loop. And then simple stuff like um, that comes stock in Studio One for keyboard shortcuts, pressing S to solo a track, pressing mute to a, mute a track, pressing R to record and enable a track. That kind of stuff is so, so user friendly to me. And it was so, so refreshing to have that kind of stuff when I entered this DAW. It's just so intuitive to, when you want to solo a track, press S especially if you're standing up, you're running a session, it's a lot more time consuming to grab your mouse, find your mouse and move over and press S to solo a track um, when you can just click on the track and click S. Or if you're already on that track, you can click S. And then of course you can page up and down tracks using your arrow keys to get to certain tracks. And if you need to solo multiple tracks, you can click one, shift, click the other, click S and it'll solo all of them. So keyboard shortcuts like that, but then also being able to create custom keyboard shortcuts. So if you come up to the Studio One tab right here, keyboard shortcuts, it'll show you all of this stuff that's in here that you can create keyboard shortcuts for. So if you wanna open different things, if you wanna find a track, there's a keyboard shortcut for that. So solo, show envelope, stuff like that is already made for you, but you can create a keyboard shortcut for removing a layer, transforming to audio, auto punch is already there. You can auto punch in and out. There's one for the click. So C turns on and off your click. All of these different features are already built in. There's stuff for uh, editing videos viewing, but a couple of them that I created that are really helpful that I use all of the time is, so decreasing the volume by 3 dB is the minus key. So when I press the minus key, it will decrease the audio on a track by 3 dB. And then the opposite way, plus three, is the equal sign. So it's the plus button, but just the equal sign will bring up a piece of audio by 3 dB. So let me show you what that looks like here. So if we come down to a piece of audio, so if we just look at the bass here, if I press the equal sign, it jumps up by three dB, right? And then if I press the minus sign, it pulls it down by three dB. So when I'm working and I'm gain staging a track, it's so intuitive and so easy to have that kind of stuff built into my workflow that if something's too loud, I can pull the audio down by three dB. And if it's too quiet, I can pull it up by three dB. Those kind of keyboard shortcuts are very, very helpful and being able to create some. So I have a couple that are for creating buses. So one of the cool features about Studio One is you can add a bus for selected channels. So if I select my keys, right, and I wanna create a bus, I already have one over here for my keys, but if I wanna create a bus just for my keyboards, I can add a bus for these two channels and it'll send these two channels to the bus. But I created a keyboard shortcut for it, which is Control Shift G. So if I Control Shift G, it'll create a bus for these two channels and it'll be ready to go. So I don't have to shift, click and right click to add bus for selected channels. 
I can just highlight these two tracks, uh, control shift G and it'll create that bus for me. I have one for creating groups as well. Um, you can see that here as well. So add a bus for channel is just control, control G. And if you want to group channels, uh, that's one that comes built into Studio One. So if you click those two channels and command G, you can create a group, you can name that group as well. We're not gonna do that at this moment, but it is there if you need it. Now, the second tip that is very, very helpful about Studio One, this is one of the features I discovered as I worked in Studio One. Um, it's a very, very helpful editing feature though. So let's go with, say our kick drum here. So if we zoom in on our kick drum a little bit, we'll go to large here. And say there was a kick hit that wasn't in line. So say this kick hit here wasn't in line with everything. So instead of having to cut this kick hit and then move the actual clip, I can actually move the actual audio piece inside. So without having to move the actual clip of audio or the actual track, I can just move this piece of audio. So the way you do that, you click on that piece of audio. If you hold Alt and Command on a Mac, you'll see your mouse changes to this little feature and I can drag the audio of this track all around. I can put it wherever I want it. And then when I'm done, I can just click X and create crossfades right there. It's that simple. It makes editing drums for me so much easier. So I'm not dragging around different clips of audio. I can actually just make my cuts. So if this kick hits you know, a little wonky, I can make my cut, drag it to where I want it, hit X. Oh, that wasn't X, but I can hit X, get my crossfades in, and I'm ready to go. I don't need to do that at that moment. That kick's looking pretty good there. But that's our tip number two. So a little review. Tip number one is custom keyboard shortcuts or keyboard shortcuts in general. And tip number two is being able to drag the actual piece of audio and not the clips. So it makes editing so much easier. Tip number three has to do with plugins. So being able to save plugin chains was a big, big reason for me of staying inside of Studio One. So if you mix certain bands a lot, or if you mix certain vocalists a lot, being able to come up here and store different effects chains. So for me, I have one called Vocal Mixing Start. So if I'm mixing a vocalist, I can come over here and load up my Vocal Mixing Start template. So it has an EQ, a compressor, and a multiband acting as a DSer ready to go. So I'm not dragging in these plugins one by one. And you can see I have a bunch of different presets or templates ready to go uh, or stored effects chain. So I have one for compression while recording. I have one for a percussion microphone. I have one for a stereo delay. Uh, there's a journey guitar amp in here. My flat plate reverb, a female vocal mixing start, DIs for a couple different guitars, as well as my plate reverb. And this is a, a, a stereoizer for one of my keyboards that records in in mono. So being able to save all those different effects chains for plugins is very, very helpful for speed and for staying in the creative mode. But on top of that, one of the other things that's very helpful is if you come over to your files window. So this is over in the browse tab. If you open up the browse tab, you can go to different songs. So say if I open up this song here, you can open up the actual song file. You can open up this called presets and you can actually drag in presets from other songs. So say I really liked the way I mixed a vocal on a certain song, I can go to that song, find it in my files folder, open up presets, channels, and I can find that vocal, say maybe it was the lead vocal, I really loved how I mixed that lead vocal, and I can drag it on to the lead vocal inside of this track, and then use that as a starting point. That's something that for me is really helpful when mixing an entire record to be able to go to the previous song and drag certain presets in. So say the bass is always sounding the same. It's always the same person singing. The drum kit was recorded in the same room, same mics, same day. They just cut the entire drums for the entire record. Being able to have those presets ready to go and to just drag them in from the previous session, mixing the song once and then dragging in those presets for the second song gets you at a better starting point for the second song. So that's a very, very helpful thing to have. That was tip number three. Tip number four here is the mastering suite. So we'll talk about that here. Let me get rid of this files window. We don't need that anymore. So the mastering suite was something that was really, really cool to have, especially if you're mixing and mastering a lot of songs and especially mixing and mastering full records. So to not have to bounce down individual mixes and then import them all into a different session, 
was very, very helpful. So the mastering suite, if I zoom out here, so say I finish my song, right? Get rid of, I think I have a limiter on. Nope, the limiter's not on, so I don't need that. So say I finished mixing my song and I'm ready to go here. All I have to do is once I save it, I can actually send it to a project. So I can add it to a project. It's already added to a project, but you could create a new project, call it whatever you wanted, and it would immediately bounce it down and open it up in a mastering session. And you would have your stereo track ready to go. And if you need to make any edits, all you have to do is click this little guy here and it will open the song. So see how it says edit song? You'd click that, it'd open you back up into your session file or your song file, make any edits that you need, save it, close this window, pop back into your mastering session, and you can update the mastering file. So if you have a bunch of songs that you bounce down to, or you export to a mastering session, you can actually update all of them at once. So if you go through and make edits on each of these individual songs, you don't have to bounce them all individually anymore. And then, so bounce it, and then go to the next one, open it, bounce it, open it, go to the next one. You don't have to do that anymore. You can make all your edits, come to your mastering session, and then click update, and you can choose which songs you wanna update in Serial. So you can update 10 songs, 12 songs at the same time, and you'll see them bounce each song automatically inside a studio, which is very, very helpful. You could have that going, go upstairs and eat dinner, or go make yourself a drink or whatever. And it's very, very helpful, so you don't have to do all of that stuff manually anymore. So that's tip number four. Tip number five, the final tip here, is the versions feature. This is something that was very, very helpful for me doing uh, different edits and different revisions for tracks. So when I finish a mix, I come up here to the file function, and you can actually save a new version. There's a keyboard shortcut for that as well. I don't use that, it's a, it's a little bit of a tricky one there to remember, but I can come up here, save a new version, and I usually call it something like mix one, so I know that's the first mix I did that I'm sending to an artist. And then, when I get the revision back, I can pop back into my song file from my mastering page, right? So just pop back into the song to edit it, do my edits, and then I would come up here, and save a new version, I'd call it mix two or revised mix. So if I need to get back to my first mix, I can just come back into versions up here and you can restore different versions. So if I click restore version, I would see all the versions for this song and I can find mix one, or if there's multiple revisions, I can find revision one, revision two, and whatever I need if there's something I need to get back to later, which is very, very helpful inside of Studio One. It makes revisions and mastering so much easier for me. So those are our five tips. Let's review here. Tip number one was keyboard shortcuts and being able to make custom keyboard shortcuts. So any keyboard shortcuts you need to know, if you click the Studio One icon, keyboard shortcuts, they are all here. You can search anything you want by key or by a function. So solo, that kind of stuff, you can search all of that and it'll come up in there. Tip number two was being able to drag actual clips of audio. So if you click on a piece of audio and you hold Alt and Command, you'll see your mouse will change to this and you can drag actual pieces of audio any way you need to adjust them inside the actual clip. So without having to add, drag the actual track around or drag actual clips around and then have to extend them and fade them together, you can just cut and drag the audio between the clips, which is very, very helpful. Tip number three, was plug-in chains or being able to drag in presets from other songs. So being able to load up the lead vocal or even just see what the lead vocal chain was in another song, very, very helpful. And then again, storing plug-in presets. If you click this little drop down here, you can store whatever effects chain you have going. So if I like this one on the snare, I can come down here, store effects chain, I can name it and it'll save right here into, you can see all the effects chains that I have saved there. Tip number four was using the mastering suite. So when I finish a mix, being able to come up here to song and add to project or update mastering file. So if you finish your mix and you send it to the mastering suite and then you have to come back and do revisions, you can update the mastering file right here or you can add it to the project, create a new project for each song. And then to be able to in the mastering file, in the mastering suite here, to be able to just get back to your song by clicking this without having to close the mastering suite and then reopen your song file. Being able to just click this and get taken to it automatically. Very, very smooth, very, very slick. 
Final tip, the fifth one was having versions. So coming up here to file and being able to save different versions of your song. So whether you wanna save you know, a whole bunch of versions, you could save a rough mix version, you could save first mix version, you could save a mastered version, you could save a vocal out version, you could save an instrumental version, you could save just vocals versions, all these different versions and to be able to bounce between them, very, very cool and very, very helpful along the way as an engineer, as a mixing engineer, as a recording engineer and as a mastering engineer. I hope that was helpful for you to see all those different tips and tricks inside of PreSona Studio One. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.